All right, let's look at benzoic acid. Nice simple molecule. Seen it many times before. Benzoic acid has a pKa of about 4.2, and it forms a conjugate acid. I'm sorry, conjugate base. Looks like this. So now let's change this a little bit and look at a substituted benzoic acid. So this is 4-chloro benzoic acid. And as it turns out, 4-chloro benzoic acid has a pKa right about 4.0. So 4-chloro benzoic acid is a stronger acid. Stronger than what? stronger than benzoic acid up here with a pKa of 4.2. So what this tells us is that there's only one change in this molecule, and it's all about this chlorine atom. Something about this chlorine atom is making this molecule a slightly stronger acid, which means that something about that chlorine atom must be affecting the negative charge of our carboxylate. Now there are two factors that we're going to use to try to explain this, and the first is going to be resonance. Resonance almost always pops up in some form when we talk about charge stabilization. Okay, so here's chlorine, and there's our carboxylate over here. So how could this chlorine be interacting with this carboxylate all the way on the right-hand side of the molecule from the left-hand side where the chlorine is? Well, this chlorine has lone pairs. It's next to, it's next to itself, next to uh, pi bonds. And so we can actually push electron density from this chlorine through these pi bonds. I'm trying to show them going to that carbon right there. And we can draw this resonance form. Of course, we're moving around electrons, so thing formal charges are going to change. Going to be a lone pair on that carbon, and O minus. So this is how we could have this chlorine on the left hand side of the molecule communicate with carboxylate through resonance. Now, there's another way that chlorine often interacts with charge, and that's by, now let's try this again, induction. So what would that look like? Well, let's redraw our structure. And what we'd say is, well, this carbon-chlorine bond is polarized, and polarization of that sigma bond puts a partial plus on the ring atom of, of, the, car, of the, the benzene ring, and that partial positive actually translates to a weak partial positive charge over here next to the carboxylate. And so this would be trying to invoke an inductive effect. This inductive effect, where you have a partial plot plus in proximity to that negative charge, this should have a stabilizing effect. In contrast, when we start pumping electron density from the chlorine over towards where there's already a negative charge, this is destabilizing. Okay, well, which one is consistent with what we're observing experimentally? Over here on the left-hand side of the page, we see that 4-chlorobenzoic acid is a stronger acid. So a stronger acid means that we are more readily forming the conjugate base. So the conjugate, conjugate base is being made more stable or a weaker base. So which one, resonance or induction, explains the fact that this is a more stable, weaker base? Well, it's the inductive effect. So sometimes when we talk about these different effects, whether it's electronegativity or induction or resonance or hyperconjugation, we, we can, they act in opposite ways in a molecule. It's up, for, up to us to figure out which one is more important. In this case, apparently the inductive effect is having the stronger impact on the reactivity of the molecule. That doesn't mean resonance isn't happening, but resonance is not as strong as induction in this case. So here's a little bit more complicated example of how we use these factors to explain reactivity in molecules.